I'm allowed to be brutally honest, the amphibious cars was my idea originally, and I said we should build one and cross the channel. But they said, no, that's not very interesting. We'll do three. I thought the triumphant entry of my Triumph Herald onto the jetty is a bit like the Mayflower arriving. Oh, that's the lamp. France, here we come. Would you admit that your design is already flawed? No. Second part wasn't so good because it sank immediately. It is all ship shape and ready to go. Mayday! It's going down! I think it was sabotaged. I've never been able to prove it. So it was allegedly sabotaged. I'm enjoying this. It had worked perfectly before, and that annoyed them. And I went out in the harbour and it immediately filled up with water. You designed a rubbish car. Cars don't make very good boats. You failed! Death Row in Bolivia. I'm not very good at heights. I ended up driving in the dark. Please don't leave me. Going, well, hey, look at us, without realising there was a massive drop to one side. So if you don't know it's there, you don't worry about it. And if you don't know it's there, but you do go over the edge, you've only got maybe three or four seconds to think, what an idiot I am, and then it's all over. This is murder. Getting the sand out of a car in the desert, especially after a helicopter shot, I actually thought we were going to suffocate. <laughs> but I was trying to get on the radio saying, you better take the helicopter away, because, ha, 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 not for telling, not a joke, we actually can't breathe. I've got every single 1920s disease. <laughs> you end up with these massive, crusty gilberts up your nose. Guys, come on. The scary bit was coming out of the airship hangar, because it was a bit gusty. The idea was that we'd come out like the Hindenburg, and we'd go, da, 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 and off we go. And it flew into the building, and I thought, it's going to get caught on the top and torn, and then the caravan will just be hanging from the roof, and I'll be hanging, and I don't like heights. It works! But it's actually delightful flying along in an airship caravan. Mayday, mayday, I'm about to enter your airspace. The thing about air traffic control is they're there to help. It is imperative that you remain well clear. Sorry, cannot comply, have no control over airship. And the view from 800 to 1,000 feet, that's a lovely altitude to fly at. The majesty of lighter than air flight. No! I may be going sideways slightly. I still think there's something in that idea. The others were sort of dismissive of it because they hadn't thought of it. What are the requirements of a police car? Most of the British police drive around in really quite dreary small diesel hatchbacks. But I thought it should be reasonably quick. It's a Lexus, James. It is, yes. I thought it should be comfortable. Morning all. Because in May's vision of the future of Britain, crims go down for a long time for quite minor infringements. It should have a siren. Mine had the siren from an ice cream van. <laughs> they stop for an ice cream and then they're nicked. It's going to be their last journey in a car for a very long time, so I thought they could have a nice one. I hope you like prison food, crims. <laughs> and then a flourish to the finish. <laughs> That's not bad. The race across London was a sort of straw-pulling exercise to see who got what. The car they've given me is this. And I should attempt to beat him on this. I've got a boat. We need to see how public transport will fare. Thankfully, on Top Gear, we have just a person. I don't know what the Stig's reaction to public transport is, because he doesn't speak. <laughs> The Stig expresses himself entirely with his helmet. He would have gone on the bus and it would have been baffling to him. He's never been on the bus before, as far as we know. He's like a cat or a particularly stupid dog. He has a function to drive around in a car. Anything else is asking quite a lot, really. Go in, get in. Oh, yeah. I'd sort of like to have a word with the boating community because power boating is completely pointless. You're just racing by. You might as well just go down the docks and ask some sailors to beat the crap out of you. Oh. Hammond had a Daytona to drive. Why was Hammond stopped? Probably because they thought a child was driving a Ferrari. <laughs> Even after all these years, my favourite is still the Rocket Robin that me and Hammond built. What occurs to me now is the list of things to go wrong is... Enormous. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to work. We're quite a long way into it. Should we go over and help? I think not. When it did go off, it was a fantastic moment. The only thing it depended on was successful separation of all the stages of the rocket. Oh, yeah! The first one's worked beautifully. The second one didn't. Separate! Separate! I think it was Kennedy who said... 
he who dares to fail miserably can achieve greatly. We merely failed miserably. It explained very neatly for the viewers why Britain doesn't have a space program. The biggest threat to life on Top Gear was in the North Pole. Look at that awful expanse of misery. I was with Jeremy, and we were away from the film crew, and we were behind quite a big ice formation, and he was just being an ass. That is impossible. And I had the shovel in my hand, and I was thinking, I could actually just kill him. And I bury him in this bit of snow and say, I don't know where he's gone. Please, James. I'm so unspeakably Be quick, outraged was... with you. We were warned by Sir Ranald Fiennes, the great explorer. You will all start hating each other um, because of the extreme cold. And you will want to kill each other. Very unfunny, idiot. And that's OK, because what happens on those trips is legitimate and it can be forgotten when you get home. So we have forgotten him. But he's very lucky to be alive. <laughs> Come <laughs> on.